So there is construction going on down the street and I have no idea if you guys can hear it. Let's hope not, but if you can, my bad. Hello everybody, my name is Danny, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the very exciting September Ski VR video. If you didn't know, September is actually my birthday month and I'm very much looking forward to that and all of the great reading that I'm going to be doing. September is the Newberry Nostalgia Readathon for the Nostalgia Train Book Club and there actually will be a TBR video for that. There's not usually TBR videos for the readathons that I do because I always forget about them and then by the time I remember that I should have done a TBR video, we're like halfway through, but it's on my schedule, I'm going to do it. Before we get to that though, I have to tell you all of the books that I read in August, and I actually participated in two readathons in August. Didn't make TBR videos for them because I completely forgot, but they were the Magical Readathon hosted by G at Book Roast and the Summer Scare Readathon hosted by Jessica Williamson. Both of their channels will be linked down below. These were very fun readathons. The Magical Readathon is month long, happens twice a year. The Summer Scare Readathon is a week long, happens once a year. I kind of didn't really follow that week-long guideline because I wanted to hit all the prompts and the books that I picked were kind of chunky, so they wouldn't have all been read in one week even if I gave it my best shot. So I just read them throughout the entire month. It's fine. I'm sure Jessica doesn't mind, but um, I'm going to just go through all of the books that I've read this month and tell you what I think about them and then tell you if they covered any prompts for either of those readathons, which every single one of these books covers a prompt from at least one of them. So let's just get on to all the books because there are a lot. So the first thing that I read in August was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 10. I am just not a fan of Regency era books, so I didn't expect much going into this, but I do like Pride and Prejudice, which when I filmed my ski VR of last month, like for August, I think I said I'd never read any Jane Austen before. I forgot Pride and Prejudice was Jane Austen. I've read Pride and Prejudice, and I like that book. I wasn't a big fan of this, and honestly, I think I might unhaul it, and I've been looking at my shelves, and there's some other books that I might unhaul, so I might make a whole video about that, so if that's something you want to see. Let me know. Yes, I gave this a 4 out of 10. just wasn't my thing. I had to read this for a length prompt for Ski VR, and then it covered a restoration prompt for the Magical Readathon, and that was a single object focus on the cover, the single object being these windows. I didn't say it before, but uh, there were four classes that I had to take for the Magical Readathon. I don't remember what they are off the top of my head, but I had to get like either one or two prompts from each of them. I ended up reading books from all three prompts for all four classes, so go me, I'm an overachiever. This also covered the Out of Comfort Zone prompt for the Summer Scare Readathon because it's a Regency era book, and like I said, I don't usually like Regency era books, so it's out of my comfort zone in that way. After that, I picked up the entirety of Chainsaw Man. Well, not the entirety, the entirety of the first arc which is the first 11 volumes. Oh, they are sliding. I'm gonna put this down and hopefully not drop them all over the place. So I ended up giving this series a 10 out of 10. I absolutely loved it. I shouldn't be surprised because this was a recommendation from my boyfriend. And my boyfriend knows my reading tastes, so at least in manga, he gives me great recommendations. I really liked it. I don't have a whole ton to say on it. It was just so, so good. I talked about it in my last Let's Talk Tropes video, so if you wanna hear more about this series, definitely check that out. This covered so many prompts because there were 11 volumes. I'm just gonna hold up the first one just so I have something to hold up while I talk. Look how gorgeous this cover is, by the way. I love the colors on it. But anyway, for the Magical Readathon, I put volume one under Elemental Studies, the prompt to start a drink with a, no, start a book with a drink. So basically you just have to drink something while you start reading a book. I did that. Then I put volume two under read a book in one sitting, which was a restoration prompt. And then for astronomy, I had to read a book with multiple people on the cover. And I put volume five for that, if I can get it out of the stack. This one, there's two people on the cover fighting. Yeah, uh, then this also covered three 
prompts for the Summer Scare Readathon. So I put volume one under horror slash thriller because this is a horror manga. It's like comedy horror, but it's still got some horror elements in there. I put volume two under under 200 pages because they're actually all under 200 pages, except one of the volumes is exactly 200 pages. And then I put volume three under diverse for me because this is by a Japanese author. It takes place in Japan, although it's an alternate history version of Japan. Um, I'm not Japanese, so it's diverse to me, but yeah, that was Chainsaw Man. Then I picked up The Tempest by William Shakespeare, and I gave this an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy most Shakespeare. Uh, this was a ski BR prompt for a friend pick, where I had texted my older sis- my, well, I texted my, both of my sisters, and my older sister responded and saying, read something by Shakespeare. So I did. And this also covered a magical readathon prompt for elemental studies, and that was a sea setting. I kind of bent the rules a little bit, because this doesn't really take place at sea, but it takes place on an island directly after a shipwreck, so I counted it as a sea setting. Then, the next book that I finished was Inheritance by Christopher Paolini. Oh my god, I cannot believe I finished this. I also give this an 8 out of 10 because I really enjoyed it. I think this is my favorite book in the series. You can really tell how much Christopher Paolini, like, developed as an author as he wrote this because he was 16 the first time he wrote, like, uh, Aragon. Like, he was a kid and by the time this came out it was probably years and years later and you could really see him grow as a writer and I really enjoyed this book. And... Uh, this book has been like the bane of my existence for almost a year now because I was meant to read it in like December and I chickened out and didn't read it and I finally did and I'm so glad that I did and I actually finished it in like under two weeks which is insane because this is a chunky boy but I'm very glad that I finally finished out this series and it's like a weight off my shoulder this honestly felt like I had climbed Mount Everest <laughs> but uh, this was a length prompt for Ski BR it covered the astronomy prompt for a book with rangers slash archers, which was fudging it a little bit, but like, I'm pretty sure there was someone who used a bow at least once in this book. I can't remember it, but like, it's had to have happened at least once in the series, so I'm counting it. And this is also covering the uh, summer scare prompt for a green book, because there's a big green dragon on the cover. After that, I read Removable Life by Anne Sophie. I was actually reading them like, concurrently because uh, Inheritance was taking me so long to read. I was like reading this in between big chunks of that. And this was a friend pick. I had to ask the Chaos Queens to pick a book for me and Crystal so kindly gave me this, which I was going to read this month anyway. So thank you, Crystal, once again. This also covered an astronomy prompt for the Magical Readathon, which was to read a book with an L in the title. And there were two, Removable Life. So covers that prompt very neatly. Then I picked up Medea by Euripides, which I only own because it is one of the Dover Thrift editions, which is an edition of books that I collect, and I had no intention of actually reading this, but this was for a restoration prompt, which is the oldest on your TBR, and I think, I'm pretty sure oldest on TBR usually means to read a book that's been on your TBR the longest, but I went the other way and went for the literal oldest book, and this was written in 431 BC, so you'd be hard pressed to find an older book. And I give this a 5 out of 10. It was interesting, but not really my vibe. The next book that I picked up was one that I very much enjoyed, and that was A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I gave it 8 out of 10 stars, and I was shocked to have loved this book so much. I kind of expected it to be like kind of middling in terms of, like I wouldn't dislike it, but I wouldn't love it. Uh, it was shocking at first to see it in this uh like point of view because it's first person point of view but it's like very deeply first person and it breaks the fourth wall a couple of times where the main character is like telling you her story and at one point she even addresses the readers and says like readers you would not believe this or whatever and like i didn't know how i would feel about that but i found myself getting really into this book and I really want to get my hands on the second and third ones now. The second one came out last year, the third one comes out late September, so maybe for my birthday someone will get me these books. Who knows? But I really enjoyed this. I 
thought that I would like it when I first heard about it because I do really like Uprooted by Naomi Novik. It's one of my favorite books from high school. But then there were like some controversies and things, but then they were addressed and like it was this whole big deal. And I don't know, I've just been kind of putting off reading this, but I finally did and I'm glad that I did because I really enjoyed it. Well, I almost forgot to tell you uh, what prompts these covered. So this covered an elemental studies prompt, which was to pick a random book on your shelf and then read the adjacent one. And it also covers spooky word in the title because deadly is a pretty spooky word. Honestly, so is education, if we're being honest. After a deadly education, I picked up Mars Red, which is a three volume manga, and I gave it a six out of 10 as a whole. I just wasn't super into it. It kind of felt like a slice of a story instead of like the whole thing. Like there was definitely like things that could have happened before and things that could have happened after that would have made it feel more full and complete, but we didn't have those and it kind of felt like unfinished. I also really hated the way it ended, but I'm a little upset about this because uh, Jem from Bookish Gems like read this a while ago and really liked it and I thought that I would like it and I didn't, so I'm a little sad, but we're gonna move on. This was the this book covered the uh, summer scare prompt for a book about vampires, so at least it covered a prompt. After that, I read my second Shakespeare of the month, which was Hamlet, and I gave it a 10 out of 10. I love Hamlet. It's been one of my favorite Shakespeare plays for like a decade now, ever since I first read it in high school. Was that a decade ago? That's crazy to think of. I don't like that. Uh, this covered the spells and incantations prompt to annotate a book. And, uh, yeah, I just went through and annotated it. One thing, though, I had bought this book at Goodwill a couple of months ago because I owned a copy of Hamlet. I had the Arden Shakespeare edition, and it was gorgeous. And I don't know what happened to it, so I must have somehow lost it in the move out of my parents' place last year. But, um, I got this one, which has a really ugly cover, and also the two first, well, no, the second and third pages were just ripped out. Like... I don't know if you can see, there's like little things here because two pages were ripped out. Like what the heck? But like I also bought it for a dollar at Goodwill, so I'm not too pressed about it. Then I tried to pick up The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher and I ended up DNFing this book at page 36, which was about 11% through. I picked this book up to cover the prompt for spells and incantations that was to pick a book from someone else's TBR and this was actually on G's TBR, the host of the readathon. And I'd been wanting to pick up a book by T. Kingfisher for a while. I've heard nothing but great stuff about it, but I just wasn't vibing with this book. And then I read some reviews and it all talked about stuff that I wouldn't really like in a book. And I kind of felt bad about putting it down because I'm like, oh, I've been wanting to read this author for a while. So like, why, why don't I just keep reading and hopefully it gets better? But then the next book that I picked up made me realize like, no, if I'm not enjoying a book from the get-go, I should not have to keep reading it if I don't want to, because some books can hook me from the beginning. And that book that I picked up was Elizabeth Webster and the Court of Uncommon Pleas by William Lashner. I completely forgot about it. I literally just finished this book like an hour ago. This book was so good. It had me hooked from the first page and I could not put it down. I'm obsessed. This is a middle grade uh, ghost book. It's about a girl, Elizabeth Webster, and she's just a normal middle schooler. And one of her classmates comes up to her and says, hey, I have this ghost in my house and it told me to come find you. And she's like, that's really weird. But then she finds out that her dad and grandpa and everyone before them are like these ghost lawyers and I'm it, making it sound so cheesy, but this is so good. Uh, Jessica Williamson, the host of the Summer Scare Readathon, if you are watching this video, which I hope you are, I know you like spooky middle grade books. Pick this up, because this is one of my favorite spooky middle grade books that I've ever read. It was so good. There's two more books in the series that I really, really, really want to get to because I just love this one so, so much. And this actually covered a Summer Scare Readathon prompt for a middle grade. So I'm very glad I picked this up this month. And lastly, we have a book that I'm actually still in the middle of, and that is Mostly Void, Partially Stars. This is the first bind up of the Welcome to Night Vale transcripts. I'm a little more than halfway. What I've been doing is, so there's the beginning of each 
transcript. There's like a little one or two page thing from one of the people involved in the creation of it talking about this episode and like their life and how it relates to it and things like that and then it goes into the transcript and so I've been reading that little blurb and then listening to the podcast as I read the transcript and it's been great. I haven't listened to Night Vale in years so I'm very glad to be getting back into it but I've listened to the first 16 episodes and this has the first 25 episodes in it. So as long as I listen to an episode a day, I will finish this on the last day of the month. So good for me. This covered a skibr prompt. I had to pick an anthology. This is an anthology. It also was a magical readathon prompt for spells and incantations to pick a book with from a random color wheel and then find a book with that color on it. And I got sand yellow. Hopefully I remember to get the picture from my phone onto my computer so I can edit it into this video. But if not, it's basically this exact shade of yellow here. So I really lucked out on the color it gave me. And this also covered the last Summer Scare readathon prompt, which was a book with moon and stars on the cover. So as you can see, there's lots of stars and also has stars in the title. Also, there's a little moon in the Night Vale logo. I forgot about that, but yeah. That is the last book that I am reading this month. So now, with almost 20 minutes of footage of me just talking about the books that I read in August, it's finally time to move on to picking the books that I'm going to be reading in September. Now there are several books that I really want to get on this TBR because, like I mentioned earlier, I am taking part in Newberry Nostalgia, which is uh, the readathon hosted by the Nostalgia Train Book Club. I will link that down below. And I have all of the books picked out for all of the prompts already, and I want to squeeze those books into this. I also kind of wanted to reread um, The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones, which was my favorite book that I read last year. It's one of my favorite books of all time now. Might be number one. We'll see after I reread. But I read it in September last year, and I've been aching to reread this like all year but I'm like no I'm gonna give it the full year and then reread it in September and it'll be like a little birthday treat getting to reread one of my favorite books. I also uh wouldn't complain if I could get a Cornelia Funk book on here because I am in the middle of rereading both the Mirror World series and the Inkheart series. Ink World series? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Uh but uh if I can get the next books in either of those, that'd be fine. Um, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say, so without further ado, let's get on to rolling. Alright, it's time for the first roll. I'm gonna have to check the footage on that, but I'm like 90% sure that was in the 50 spot, which means I can pick any book that I want. If not, it was in the 40 spot, and that would be a friend pick. So I've reviewed the footage, and for that first roll, it did in fact go in the 50 point spot, which like, first of all, I am so shocked. I did not think I could roll that well, but uh, that means I get a free pick. I can do literally any book that I want. Kind of sucks a little bit because um, I, I haven't picked any of my other books, so I don't know what books are going to fit onto the TBR later, but um, you know what? We're, we're just gonna roll with it. I am not gonna pick a book that is on the uh, Newberry Nostalgia TBR. I'll grab it and show you what I will be picking. So the first book that I'm gonna be putting on this uh, TBR for September is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. What a surprise. I love this book, guys. I love it so much. I'm a little bit scared that I'm not gonna love it as much on the reread as I did the first time, but that's probably just me having anxiety. But yeah, this is a zombie book. We all know I love zombies. The little tagline is nothing stays buried forever. So true. Uh, the cover is gorgeous. I am so excited. I won't ramble on about this because I've literally done that in like 20 videos already. So literally go to any video that I put out between September and December of last year. And there's like a good chance that I've talked about this book if you want to know what it's about. All right, and now we have our second roll. And that was in the 10 spot, so that's a genre prompt. Okay, and so for our second roll, I got it in the 10 point spot. Not as good as the 50 point spot, but you know, points are points. They get me uh, money in my book buying budget. 
And so I have to pick a genre prom. So I've got my blue bin. I'm gonna shake these up. That was weak, let me shake it a little bit more. And we're gonna go with this one. This is sci-fi or paranormal. Let me take a look at my uh, TBR that I picked out for Newberry Nostalgia and see if something fits this. All right, and so for a sci-fi or paranormal book, I'm actually gonna go with The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman for many reasons. One, this is the group book for September's um, Nostalgia Train Book Club. I know words. Uh, it's the group book, so I would want to be reading it anyway. It's got the metal, nope, where is it? This side, it's got the metal on it, so it could cover any prompt in the Newberry Nostalgia prompt list. And for that, I'm actually going to put it under Buddy Read, because one, it's the group book, so other people are going to be reading it, but also, my boyfriend said he would read along with me, and I'm very excited for that. The last book that we read together was actually Good Omens by Neil Gaiman. You can see actually like right up there. Um, that was three years ago. So we've read like the same books since then, but we haven't like read them together. So I'm very excited for that. I think I'm gonna have a great time. I love this book and it has like ghosts and I think a vampire in it. So that's paranormal and I'm counting it. So this is the second book officially on September's Skibiar TBR. And now we're on to our third roll for the month. And that was in the 20 spot, so that's a friend pick. Okay, and for our third roll, we have made it into the 20 point spot. So I have a friend pick. So I've got my D4. I'm gonna roll it and see which friend I'm gonna ask to pick a book for me. So my dice tray is over here. That is a four, so it's the Chaos Queens. So let's hope they give me as good a pick as they did last month. So I've just messaged them. Hopefully they get back to me soon and I'll tell you what they pick. Okay, so that's actually really quick. So I just finished like 10 seconds ago filming all of the rest of my rolls and my picks for the other prompts and Crystal has gotten back to me. Crystal is once again the quickest chaos queen to respond and she said, read the third book on your Newberry Nostalgia TBR list. I'm like, okay, I can do that. The third book on that list is Bridge to Terabithia, which I have put in the recommendation slot because I said, hey guys, I need a recommendation. This was in the, um, the Sound Train Book Club Discord server, by the way. I said, hey guys, recommend me a book for this prompt. And Anne listed like eight books and they were all either ones that I already had on my list or did not have access to and therefore couldn't put on my list. And then finally she's like, uh, Bridge to Terabithia. And I'm like, okay, that's going on the list. And now it's on this official TBR as well. All right, here we are with the fourth roll. And that was in the 20 prompt, no, 20 point spot. So it's a length prompt if I could speak. Okay, and for our fourth book, I've landed in the 20 point spot. So I have a length prompt to pick this book. I've got my D8 here. We're gonna roll it and see what page number we're trying to fit. Hopefully it's somewhere between like 300 to 400, 400 to 500 maybe. 200 to 300 might work. I don't remember how long the books on my Newberry Nostalgia TBR are, but um, I think it was somewhere around there. So I'm gonna roll it. Please be nice. Okay, yeah, so I got a three. So I have to pick a book between 201 and 300 pages. Hopefully something fits. Okay, yes, several of the books fit. So for this one, I'm actually going to place Ella Enchanted, which is for the prompt of a book that's older than me because this came out in 1997 and I was born in 1998 so it just fits and I remember really liking the movie as a kid but I've never read the book and I'm very excited to read it and see if I like it so that was a lucky roll. And now we are at our fifth and final roll for the month of September and that is a 10 so it is yet another length prompt. Oh no, okay, so for this last roll, I got it in the 10 point spot, which means I have another length prompt, so I've got my D8 again. Let's hope it's as nice as it was last time. I'm gonna roll it. 
okay, I got a four this time around. So I don't know why it's so awkward picking up a die and showing you guys. I feel like I'm always like twisting my hand around, but um, yeah, a four. So I have to pick a book between 301 and 400 pages. So there were definitely a couple that fit there. So I'm going to go look through my list again and specifically pick which one is going to be on the ski BR TBR. All right, so the book officially going in the last spot on this Ski BR TBR for September 2022 is The Wednesday Wars by Gary D. Schmidt. I have put this in the serendipity pick spot for the Newberry Nostalgia readathon prompt list. That is because I've read this book before back in seventh grade, I want to say. Uh, a little story that I'm going to tell again when I do my TBR video, but whatever. I did a thing called Battle of the Books in middle school, which is basically you get a team of five people and there's a list of books and you have like a month or two months or whatever to read them and you can like allocate within your team who reads what and whatever and then at the end all the teams compete in a trivia contest about those books and uh, my team won and The Wednesday Wars is one of the books that I remember reading for that and I loved it. I remember it like well, very profound to me. I can't remember any specifics now because that was like 10 years ago. Maybe I was in middle school 10 years ago and not high school. I don't know. Time is fake. But um, I'm calling this my serendipity pick because when I was first scrolling through the Wikipedia page for the Newberry Medal, I was like, oh, I don't want to read any of these books. And then I came across that one and I'm like, holy crap, I remember this book. I'm going to read it. So now it's on this TBR, and yeah. So now I just have to wait for the Chaos Queens to get back to me, and I will have it already inserted, the clip of whatever book they tell me to read. Yeah, like I said, time is fake. This video is gonna be out of order. It's fine. I'll, I'll see you for the outro in a little while. All right, so that was actually a relatively quick Ski BR, which I guess balances out with my insanely long uh, wrap up from August, but it's fine. Uh, these are the only physical books on my TBR, just two of them. The other three are I'm going to be reading digitally through Scribd. So, first up, we have The Bone Houses, which I picked for a free pick because I managed to roll in the 50 point slot. I'm so excited. Then we have The Graveyard Book, which is for a sci fi slash paranormal and that was like a genre prompt, obviously, because sci-fi paranormal is a genre. But I also have to read Bridge to Terabithia, which was a friend pick. Thank you, Crystal of the Chaos Queens. Then I have to read Ella Enchanted, which was a length prompt for a book between 201 and 300 pages. And I have to read The Wednesday Wars, which was also a length prompt from 301 to 400 pages. So four of the five books on this are books that I... I don't know if you can hear my boyfriend sneezing. He's sneezing a lot. I'm going to keep going. Four of the books on this list are from my Newberry Nostalgia TBR, which is fantastic. So I guess you get a little sneak peek at that video. I think it's going to be... I think it's the next one coming up after this one. I honestly don't remember. But yeah, so now you already know half the books I'm going to read. So check out that video for the other half of that TBR. For now, this has been me picking books to read. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for more content, and that way I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.